going back. Oh, it's almost the end of the year. So what I want to do, I want to try to see if I can grab, do one last video before, before I go on holidays. And I want to make this one about my favorite film camera, the Canon FTB. I've got a small collection of film cameras. Uh, I've got an OM1, a Canon Canonette, and Canon EOS 500, and an EOS 300. Now, depending on the shoot, depending on the day, depending on which side of the bed I get up in the morning, I choose which camera I want to shoot with film. When I want to be creative, the, the camera I always grab is, is this one. Creative in the sense that I want to slow down. I want to control, more than anything else, I want to control the focus. Now this one here that I have on the body at the moment, this one's the original one that came with the camera uh, when my dad bought this brand new back in 1971. And this is just a, what they would consider a kit lens, the 50mm 1.8. So I've managed to get a couple of the prime lenses. I've got a 28mm here, um, which I love the focal length, particularly for like um, when you're going out for general uh, family stuff, um, environmental portraits or just landscapes. I've got a 35mm, which I find tends to fit right in between the, the, the sweet spot with... Um, wide wide angle lens to capture environments or a 50 mil portrait so the 35 mil you can do everything so if there's one lens you can put on a, on a camera that's the one i would always put on the 35 mil 2.8 and this one here this ft1 is uh is in very sharp <clears throat> mind you these ones are, they call these the uh, the new or fd ends i think and they came out a lot later than the than the chrome ones you see here uh, they're a little bit more plasticky and a lot lighter, but the optics on here haven't changed. So for small, cheap, cheap version of the FD lenses, the optics are amazing on these. Not just the optics, but again, still the focusing is incredibly smooth. It makes it easy. And nothing like the brand new lenses focusing. They're not made for manual focusing. Uh, and I've also got a 50mm 1.4, just a, that more shell that we filled. Again, beautiful focusing. This one here has um, an adapter on it, because what I like to do, I like to actually adapt it onto my um, X-Pro2. And if I just quickly take this off and chuck it on here. And I have, with the focus picking on these cameras, I have a beautiful manual lens that adds character to my shots and also enables me to get that almost full manual feeling with a modern digital camera. And that, that, that's the beauty of the X-Pro2. So I've got almost the exact same controls on the top with uh, shutter speeds and ISO and, um, and the aperture on the actual lens that I would have on a old, old school uh, manual film camera. So I get almost the same uh, the same, I can get almost the, the same benefits I get from film onto a digital camera. Uh, also, I've got, I managed to get also, uh, this is a Vivitar 135 2.8. I haven't used this very often, but I should try to give it a shot for more portrait work. Uh, just quickly, I want to show this very cool uh, case that came with it. When my, when my dad bought it brand new, he would have gotten the case. He got everything with it. This is a full leather case. You can slot it in, fits in like this, screws the bottom bit into the tripod mount screw, and flip it over like so. And the button at the back closes it up. There you go. Beautiful old case and still such a great condition. And these were the old straps that came with it as well. They're very thin leather straps. I don't use these ones. I've attached some of the more modern ones because they're more comfortable. Now I'll show you a couple samples of some images I've taken with it. 
uh, I've used it for all sorts. I've used it, as I mentioned before at the start. I've, I've taken it out to take photos of my kids. I've taken it out when I'm just wandering on my own to do landscapes. I've taken it out to do uh, just casual portrait work with some friends. I've done uh, fashion shoots in the studio. All with um, essentially just all manually, uh, manually, all manually exposed. Now on those outdoor shoots when it's very bright and you've got a ISO 400 and particularly with the, uh, the Canon F, Canon, this Canon FTB, it only goes to 100 shutter speed maximum. So, uh, which means that um, you can't go, you can't crank it up to 200 or 400 if you've got a very bright day and you want to shoot wide open at 1.4 or 1.8 or F2. So I find an ND filter is quite indispensable. Now I've got this four stop ND filter, which is just the right amount uh, to compensate, um, to work on my camera that only goes to 100 shutter speed. And the great thing with the set of uh, FD lenses that I have, these three, the 35, 28 and 50, they all have the exact same filter thread. So I just needed just the one filter and it'll go on each one of them, depending which one I use. These do have a, a battery. The, you can get a battery to, uh, to, give it, to give you exposure. So you put a battery in here, you turn the, the button on and there's a little lever in here that just goes up and it joins up with a little circle. And you just adjust your, your aperture or your, um, or your shutter speeds to make the, the little circle match up with the lever and that should give you the correct exposure. I don't have a battery in here, I've never used a battery in one of these ones here. You can't get the original ones, you can get newer ones which are slightly different voltage so they, their exposure tends to change a little bit, but I've always either used a light meter on my phone or I've pretty much guessed uh, the exposure. And with enough experience shooting film, you should be able to get a pretty accurate exposure guessing, depending also on the film you use. If you Using a pro uh, film stock like a Portra 400, it has a lot more latitude. So if you're off by one or two stops, when printing or scanning, you should be able to recover highlights and shutters quite well. If you're using uh, the cheaper stock like the Kodak Color Pluses, you probably want to try to be a bit more accurate uh, with those exposures, particularly avoiding underexposing. It's the, as you might, may have heard or read, it's the opposite of digital film. Digital, you don't want to overexpose. Uh, with film, you don't want to underexpose. You can, a lot, of, a lot of the film can recover highlights a lot better than it can recover shadows. Hope you enjoyed the little video and I'll see you guys in the new year. Be good.